ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's September 16th, 2021. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com. Joined, as always, by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day. And it's Thursday, Matt, uh, two days away from kickoff against Michigan State. And uh, no matter how you you slice it and dice it, this is going to be a big game for the Hurricanes. Yeah, I didn't think it would be a few weeks ago, but, you know, Michigan State's not bad. You know, they're not bad. Miami's better than them, but, you know, it's football. Anything can happen. So... uh, you know, the betting line is hovering around, uh, uh, you know, six and a half points. Uh, so people are expecting Michigan State to be competitive in this game. And uh, the more you break it down, you see that that's, you know, seems relatively reasonable. Uh, they, they bring a lot of weapons to Hard Rock Stadium. They have a great running game. Their offensive line playing as well as just about anybody in the country. Uh, so this is going to be a good test for the Hurricanes. And the Miami offense is going to have to show up this week. And... Uh, and be able to do some things. And uh, we've seen those signs all week that they're feeling the urgency of that um, with, with Garen Justice being a little bit um, animated on, and on edge about his offensive line and actually calling out guys by name, which is something that we haven't seen very often. Um, the players, you could tell they're, they're feeling urgency as we've spoken to them this week. Uh, so I'm going to be really interested to see what um, Rhett Lashley is able to dial up there at uh, Hard Rock Stadium on Saturday. All right, so on the website today, we we take a look at tight end Elijah Arroyo, who had a coming out party, so to speak, last week against Appalachian State. Looked relatively good, and you know they had a little package in there with two tight ends that they rolled out for one series. Uh, didn't go to it an, an, a, a ton, but that might be something that we start to see more often this year, Matt, because the one thing that Arroyo does bring to the table is he's a very good blocker. And uh, if, if Lashley's able to draw up some things, maybe even use him a little bit on some of these bubble screens and things like that, Arroyo can impact the offense. Yeah, I mean, we were talking in the fall about why would you put Arroyo on the field when you could use an extra receiver? There's so many great receivers in the receiving room. But now it's just like <laughs> none of the receivers have really stepped up. You know, Arroyo, why not give him a chance? You know, he's got some decent size, athleticism. You saw him, you know, make a nice play last game. So maybe roll him out there, see what happens. Well, one receiver that is stepping up, in my opinion, is Keyshawn Smith. And uh, last night he uh, made an appearance on the Lamar Thomas show and uh, got a chance to meet Lamar uh, online, at least. And uh, and that was kind of interesting. We'll have a story on the on that on the website today. Uh, uh, another story that b- talks about this week's Michigan State game is we have you know five burning questions leading into the game. We try to identify the five questions that Miami has to answer as they go to Hard Rock at noon on Saturday. And um, Matt, I think it was kind of tough cutting it to five. I mean, I think there's so many questions uh, coming off these first two games. Yeah, I mean, we could have had 50, but I mean, you know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, the, the biggest questions to me are the ones that are in that story. You know, those are the major ones. You could nitpick and pick this and pick that and, you know, different things like that based on the past couple of games. But I mean, honestly, the biggest thing to me is their mentality because if they go in the tank and they're just not into it or they fall behind early and they don't like stay, you know, where they need to be and and doing their own jobs, like it it could be a a real mess. So to me, the biggest things keep their heads on straight, just do their jobs. They're the better teams. They should win. Well, this is the last chance to build real momentum before the ACC schedule kicks in. Uh, you know, whatever happens next week, that's all, that's going to be artificial momentum. This this is a chance to get some real momentum going that you could take into the heart of the schedule coming up here. And uh, you know, like we said, it couldn't be more important uh, of a non-conference game Saturday at Hard Rock, just for the style points that they need to show. Uh, just get themselves and everybody else in, in in the fan base and the community feeling a little bit better about the team and the program because. You know, all this chatter going on and, and, and people showing anger and, and uh, being upset at the way the team looks and 
uh, talking about Manny Diaz's future and things like that. None of that's a positive. Uh, and, you know, I think everybody's got to, you know, just, you know, sit back and let this season unfold. It could, it could go and it clearly can go in, in any direction right now. I think we, we feel fairly safe saying that, uh, you know, the team has shown some susceptibility that maybe we didn't realize they had to the degree that they have. But on the other hand, it, it also is a team that could get itself together well enough to win nine games. So uh, Saturday at Hard Rock, um, very, very important. Matt, another reason Saturday at Hard Rock is important is one of the guys, one of the recruits that's going to be flying into town on a red eye to be there um, couldn't be any more significant, and that's Anthony Lucas, the big defensive tackle. Uh, he's got so many options around the country, a guy that's just burst onto so many radars. Uh, talk a little bit about Anthony Lucas's visit uh, th this weekend to Miami and um, how significant you think it's going to be. Yeah, well, he's from across the country. And, you know, I think in his heart, he wants to come to Miami, but that's only if everything, you know, if all the boxes are checked. He's got family in Fort Lauderdale. He lived here until he was 11. Dad attended the University of Miami, did not play football, but he attended the University of Miami. There's a lot of ties to Miami. He already took his official visit in June. He loved it. But if this program isn't on the upswing and if he goes to the game and fans are booing or the defense doesn't look right, um, you know, that's, you know, he's got other choices that are really good. Alabama, Texas A&M, among others. He's going to be taking other visits after this to a bunch of schools. Um, so this game is, is of monumental importance. There's a reason. I mean, look, it's not fun to play your high school game on Friday night, hop in an 11.50 p.m. flight, come and arrive in Miami, I think it's 7 a.m. in the morning, go to the stadium, you know, watch the game, sleep, next day back on campus, and then flying out that afternoon at 4 p.m. Like, that's not, you know, what most people, at least as a father, that's not my ideal vacation. They want to do it, and they need to do it, because they need to see the game, the atmosphere, to see the way the team looks, get around the team in the locker room, see what he would be getting into if he wants to be a Miami Hurricane. And if it doesn't go well, he's not coming here. All right, another story on the website today. One of the interested visitors last weekend and possibly this weekend as well is Chris Graves, the defensive back commit um, who checked out the Appalachian State game and gave us his review of what he saw and uh, what he thinks of, of what he's seeing from the Hurricanes so far this season. So make sure you check that out. Uh, a couple other stories that will be popping on the website today. We'll have our You Bet uh, Kane Sport show with uh, Lee Sterling the sports handicapper who will talk about the Miami Michigan state game and some of the other games around college football that he's identified that he thinks uh, might be interesting to look at for those of you that like to wager on your games. Uh, something else that will be popping onto the website real soon uh, is the debut of Kane sport films. It's a, a film division that we've created uh, that's to work with players on NIL deals and, and maybe do some other documentary type features and stuff as well as it's a, an attempt on our part to diversify our content, bring some new things to the table. Um, we did an NIL deal with Zach McLeod to tell his story. And it, it's really, really, really a, a great story, Matt. When you look at everything that Zach McLeod has gone through as a Miami Hurricane, coming in as a freshman um, with uh, Shaq and Pinckney and being one of the big three, the game changed on him. And his position almost became obsolete. Miami goes to a striker. That, so then um, he comes back for a senior year. COVID-19 gives him the opportunity to make that two years. And then he, he at the bowl, in bowl game preparations last year, um, him and Blake Baker suddenly came up with the idea, let's try defensive end. And it worked out well enough to where he decided to make a full-time switch to the defensive end for this season and now um, is starting for the Hurricanes at defensive end. So um, uh, the, the movie is called Running It Back, the Zach McLeod story. We'll be uh, introducing that uh, possibly as soon as uh, this afternoon on the website. A few little uh, wrinkles being cleared up there, and then um, we will be releasing – that's Zach McLeod short film. Uh, so a lot for you guys to absorb here today and into tonight. Um, you also have the podcast of the Lamar Thomas show from last night where two-time national championship coach Dennis Erickson joined us. And uh, that was epic viewing. And if you didn't get a chance to watch it live, make sure you watch the video on demand today. Uh, so for Matt Shodell, I'm Gary Furman. We'll see you next time on Good Morning Cane Sport. And have a great day, everybody.